I wanted to thank LCC International University for organizing this LCC Academy Lecture. This truly fascinating and interesting lecture has helped me to find more areas where I'm interested in, as well as meet a lot of amazing people and professors. My reflection video is going to be about persuasion, but instead of focusing on resisting compliance, I wanted to focus on getting what you want using just your words. Well, how do you get what you want using just your words? Turns out that Aristotle set out to answer exactly the same question over 2,000 years ago with a treatise on rhetoric. Rhetoric, according to Aristotle, is the art of seeing the available means of persuasion. And today, we apply it to any form of communication. Aristotle focused on oration, though, and he decided to describe three types of persuasive speech. Forensic, or judicial rhetoric, epidectic, or demonstrative rhetoric, and sibilaticon or deliberative rhetoric. Forensic or judicial rhetoric establishes facts and judgments about the past, similar to detectives at a crime scene. Epidectic or demonstrative rhetoric makes a proclamation about the present situation, as in the wedding speeches. But the most, the way to accomplish change is through deliberative rhetoric or sibilaticon. Rhetoric in the past or the present, deliberative rhetoric focuses on the future. It's the rhetoric of politicians debating a new law by imagining what effect it might have. Like when Ronald Reagan warned that the introduction of Medicare would lead to a socialist future spent telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in America when they were free. But it's also the rhetoric of activists urging change, such as Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream that his children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. In both cases, the speakers present their audience with a possible future and try to enlist their help in avoiding or achieving it. But what makes for good deliberative rhetoric besides the future tense? According to Aristotle, there are three persuasive appeals, ethos, logos, and pathos. Ethos is how you convince an audience of your credibility. Winston Churchill began his 1941 address to the U.S. Congress by declaring, I have been in full harmony all my life with the tides which have flowed on both sides of the Atlantic against privilege and monopoly, thus highlighting his virtue as someone committed to democracy. Logos is the use of logic and reason. This method can employ rhetorical devices such as analogies, examples, and citations of research or strategy statistics, but it's not just facts and figures, it's also the structure and content of the speech itself. The point is to use factual knowledge to convince the audience, as in Sojourner Truth's argument for women's rights. I have as much muscle as any man and can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed, and can any man do more than that? Unfortunately, speakers can also manipulate people with false information that the audience thinks is true, such as the debunked but still widely believed claim that vaccines cause autism. And finally, pathos appeals to emotion, and in our age of mass media, it's often the most effective mode. Pathos is neither inherently good nor bad, but it may be irrational and unpredictable. It can just as easily rally people for peace as incite them to war. Most advertising, from beauty products that promise to relieve our physical insecurities to cars that make us feel powerful, relies on pathos. Aristotle's rhetorical appeal still remains powerful today, but deciding which of them to use is a matter of knowing your audience and purpose, as well as the right place and time. And perhaps just as important is being able to notice when these same methods of persuasion are being used on you. Thank you.